Welcome back guys to the channel. My name is Ed. I'm going to be taking you through Fusion to create an epic glitch effect just like this. Now, as we did in our last video, guys, I'm going to talk to you about how we do this and why we do this. If you are not interested in why we would do this and you just want to be like, Ed, I just want the effect. Stop with all the bull crap. I'm here for my tutorial. Skip to the timestamp below and you can get into it. Now, if you're wondering why you would rather create your own text effect versus something that someone else has created, because I know there's a ton of presets out there that help you create these sorts of things. The real reason is flexibility. For me, I always prefer to have as much creative flexibility in my work as possible. And obviously when we're building things from the ground up, we do have that advantage. If I buy a preset from someone, even it might be fantastic. If I go and apply it to some projects, it might not work. There might be elements I want to change that I can't, because if you watch my last video on macros, you'll know that once you've created a macro, you can only change the elements that have been selected in the creation process of that macro. So if that haven't, haven't been selected and you need to change a parameter, it's just not gonna work for you. When we create our own effects in Fusion, it means we have the flexibility to create it exactly what we need, tailored to us. And it's pretty cool to be able to say that we made that effect. You know, it's also always an awesome feeling when someone clicks on a video and goes, someone's typing away and they go, oh, how did you do that? How did you do that sick effect? You can actually say that you made it and you can tell them how you did it. That's pretty cool rather than just kind of going like, Ah, uh, yeah, shit, that was, that was actually a preset. So before we get started, guys, I want you to know this is gonna be a longer tutorial. This is not a hard process, but it is a bit of a lengthy one. So all the tools we'll be using don't require a huge amount of explaining. I will do explaining I need to do as we go through, but the tools we're using, you will see, aren't actually that complicated in what they do. It's just about using them all together and using them well and understanding the keyframes. So this isn't exactly complicated, but it is lengthy. So don't get scared by the length of time. I'll chop out the bits that you don't need to know and fast forward through them because there's a lot of repetition in this. But ultimately, by the end of it, guys, you'll be creating amazing glitch effects. And it'll also give you a really good grasp of titles in Fusion. So it's gonna help you guys out a lot. So let's jump in, get into it, and show you guys how to make an epic glitch effect individual resolve. All right, guys, so here we are, individual resolve, ready to roll. First thing I'm gonna do is come over to our effects tab, which I already have highlighted. And we're just gonna drag a fusion composition onto the timeline. I find this helps with stability. Um, you don't have to, you can go straight to fusion if you wish. Now, coming over to fusion, we've got a blank slate, which is exactly how we like things. So first things first, guys, we are going to add a background node. Nice and simple. I'm going to drag that across to our media out. We've got a simple black background. Next thing we're going to need, because this is a title, is a text node. Just use a text one. We don't need that 3D one. Little fusion hack, I guess. It's not really a hack. A lot of people know this. But if you do, shift, click, and drag onto in between two nodes, it'll automatically drop a merge node in for you. I'm going to organize this just a little bit, just to make sure that everything we need is uh, where it needs to be. I'm not really gonna play with the background node too much, it's just there to give us a nice black slate. Um, so I'm gonna move that out of the way. So first things first, we're gonna need to create some text to glitch. Why not just do it with the word glitch? I mean, that seems easier than the other tutorials that I've been seeing, the ones I, I, I learned on how to do this. This is what they used, using my favorite font, which is called Komu, um, and we're ready to roll. Now the way we build this effect guys is basically by layering a bunch of marks on top of the text and fading them in and out in quick succession to sort of give it a glitchy sort of, uh, this look like data's breaking up, like a glitch. So mainly what we're gonna be using, like I said before in the intro, is lots of sort of simple things. Obviously adding a text node and a background node is nice and simple. What we need to start adding now is our rectangle masks here. So just while we're selecting the text scene, we're gonna add our rectangle. Now, once we've added the node, you can see once we drag it around, anything inside the green box is going to be, we're gonna be able to see, and anything outside that green box is gonna be covered up. What we're gonna do is basically cut this into random and different shapes. You can angle it if you want to, do whatever what you mean want. What that is, is basically And we're gonna keep on building done, rectangles. We'll have several. So we're gonna add another one on top of this. And we're gonna keep doing this until we can reveal the whole word. So as you can see, if I chuck this mask on top of this other mask, it doesn't interfere with it at all, but it'll still reveal the text. So you're just gonna keep on building and building and building until you've got the full word revealed. So just keep on adding rectangles and rectangles and rectangles 
changing the shapes. I like to cut some of the words in half or you know, put them on angles. Just cool little things help to sort of sell this effect. You don't have to, but we keep building and building and building until we have the full word of glitch revealed. And then we're ready to start the second phase. So I'll just keep on adding. I like to do a few angled ones just because it adds a bit of a nicer effect to it, sells it a bit more. And like with anything in Fusion, the more effort you put in, while it might take a little bit longer, it does really help sell effects and it's gonna make you guys realize how powerful this is because essentially, I think anyway, the time investment is always paid back. So spend a little bit of extra time doing an effect and you're gonna find that it'll look that much better and it's gonna really separate you from those presets. Because obviously, if you're making something that looks the same as a preset, you may as well use a preset. But that's not what we're here to do. We're here to make great custom effects and really increase our knowledge of the program itself. So we're up to the next step now, guys. Now that I've got all of our rectangles here and you can see that they are revealing the word. We are ready for the next step in our editing process for this glitch text effect. What I need to do is click on the rectangle here and we're gonna basically fade these in and out using this level slider just up here. So we wanna create a keyframe, just click here and all you're gonna do is go across one keyframe. I'm just gonna use the arrow keys for this. So just pressing the right arrow key to take me across one, I'm gonna drop this down. Go across one more, I'm gonna drop this back up. And I'm gonna keep doing this for probably half a second. And then you can stagger it by two if you like, back up, down to one, back up, one, two, three, back down, back up to one. Now, if I go into my spline tool and I select the rectangle that we've just done, you can see that we have this text effect here. We've got our keyframes here. Next thing we wanna do is just select this and we're gonna press S to smooth it out. What I find is when you are doing a glitch effect, um, if you don't smooth it out, it looks a little bit too intense and it's a little bit too harsh in your eyes. It's just like kind of all coming at you at once. Whereas if it eases in and out while it's so subtle and it's only one keyframe, your eyes do pick up on it and it makes it a little bit nicer to watch. So smooth these out. I find that basically with every transition, a smooth keyframe is almost always better. Unless it's a really, really desired look that you're going for, always smooth it out. So the next thing we need to do is take these keyframes and apply it to the other rectangles to recreate the effect on all of them. I'm gonna go through that twice with you guys on two different of these masks, these rectangles, and then I'm just gonna speed through the rest because you do not need to see me copy and paste all of these keyframes into the other nodes. So I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna go, once they're selected, you'll see that, right click up here, I'm gonna go copy points. Now what we need to do is select another rectangle. I'm just gonna go directly above myself, rectangle three, and you can see it's not coming up on our spline yet. All we've gotta do is come up to the uh, parameter that we'd like to be editing or add the keyframes to. I'm gonna click the keyframe up here and it's gonna show up in your spline tool. For me personally, I always de-click the original one so we know where our sort of spacing is up here. And you can see there's a red little marker here that tells us exactly where we're gonna be pasting it. That is where your cursor is on the timeline. So when you press paste, it's always gonna go where your cursor is on the timeline. So when I paste here, you can see it's up with this one. And as you can see, that is glitching in and out. You can see it's sort of that effect is glitching in. Just look at that, that, you can see it glitches out. Do that once more for you guys on rectangle four. Adding the keyframe. And you can see I've got rectangle three there. And you can see we've got rectangle two there as our guide. And I can press control V and paste that in. And as you can see, we've just added that. So all we're doing guys, again, click on the rectangle you want, get rid of the other one, click on the rectangle you want, add your keyframe in to bring it up on the spline. And then we're just gonna drag our cursor to where we want it. And boom, and see it's all sort of coming together now. So to finish out this stage, guys, we've just got to copy all these keyframes into all the other nodes, all the other masks. So you don't need to watch that. I'm going to speed through that really quickly and then we'll get back into it. All right, guys, now that we've keyed in all the frames for our mask and we're ready to roll, the next thing we're going to do is add in a duplicate node. So shift space brings up the search tool. 
select tool for fusion, adding in that duplicate node, and we're ready to roll. This node does exactly what it sounds like it's gonna do. It's gonna duplicate the effect that it's linked to. So for your text, it's gonna create duplicates of that. Now keeping in mind when you're looking at the copies, that includes the original as well. So if you've got two copies on there, it's gonna create one duplicate of it, not two duplicates, which is what I originally thought it was. So you might be smarter than me and figure that out. You might not be, maybe you like me. Also, when you're doing 2.5 or any sort of half value or third value, whatever it is, it's not like half the word, so you're not gonna get half the word glitch, it's to do with opacity. So if you've got three, it's gonna have two duplicates and your original, so three items, all at full opacity. What if you've gone 2.5 here, it's gonna have two pieces of text and then a third one that's gonna be half opacity. So usually 2.5 is pretty good because it can give you the effect of the third ones, you know, fading out. Now we've got the time offset. This is the other important thing that we wanna play around with. When we're looking at time offset, basically that is how much you want to stagger the duplicates appearing. So what we can do is do two, which means that it's gonna take two frames for the duplicates to appear successively after each other. So the first one and then the second one. So that's a cool little effect because for this sort of example, it does mean that you're gonna have a little bit of lag in there um, and it is very helpful to realize that in future if you're ever using the duplicate tool. Second thing we need is the jitter. Now this one is basically where we can see our actual text coming to life. This is what's gonna really help us sell this effect. You've got these uh, two parameters here, center and axis on the X and Y axis. And then the X size is another one that we will be using. So as you can see, center just means the center of where this is going to be placing. So if you've got this back to what it was of zero and zero, it's gonna be right on top of each other. So you've got to drag this out to actually see your glitches and you can see it just really just changes where it is and it just does sort of on a radial effect. So your third one, your third copy or your second copy is gonna be uh, more affected by this change than the second one. Basically, we wanna space this out a little bit and we're gonna hit on our keyframe for random seed and you can see as I do this, it will move itself around nice and easy. So we're gonna be using this effect to really make sure it looks like it is glitching, moving along keyframe by keyframe. So we'll set it up there. Other thing I wanna do is change the X size. So as you can see, Once I've changed the X size, as I glitch, as it glitches in, it's gonna be getting bigger and smaller, making it look like it's moving through the scene rather than being on a 2D plane. Again, really gonna help you sell this effect. So all I'm gonna do is keep going across. I'm going to make sure there's nothing on the first one. And then when the first glitch appears, I'm gonna click reseed, reseed, going across, just using that right arrow to do every single keyframe all the way across. Bang, 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 bang. And I'll just keyframe in this center. Whoops, zero, zero. So now this is what we've got after we've keyframed in all of those duplicate effects. Looks much smoother. I'm pretty happy with that already. That's a pretty cool effect, I'd say. Um, you add in a bit of sound effects, you get a really cool title there. Last little thing we can do, guys, and this makes it, just sells it that little bit more, is just a prism blur. And when I say last little bit, I didn't mean it because I forgot I was gonna add in something else. Now the prism blur is pretty straightforward. The real thing I'm looking for though is the abstraction distance. As you can see, if we zoom in here, we have got this green sort of effect hovering around the image. It's sort of like an on old TV, that sort of color disruption that you sort of get. And this is what's really gonna sell the effect. And I really, really love this because it really brings it all together. So first things I'm gonna come back to where we start. I'm gonna keyframe the distance in, I'm gonna take it right down. Keyframe in the blur as well, take that right down. So we've got a nice clean slate to start with. Next one, we're just gonna bring that up a little bit, not too much. The main thing we want is that abstraction distance. I want you to watch how much cooler this makes this look. Just awesome, just absolutely awesome. So we'll come to the end of the effect and then 
take this down as well. And what I might do is actually just take the abstraction distance down a little bit as well. Come back to this start bit, take that down a little bit as well. There we go. And that is a cool effect, excuse my language. Um, I'm really happy with that. Last little thing that you saw guys, and this is gonna be very straightforward if you've watched any of my other tutorials, is just adding a DVE tool so we can make that really smash the screen and feel like it's flying towards us into the glitch. So DVE tool is amazing. It is a node that allows you to sort of move objects through the Z axis and move it towards and away from the camera rather than just on the sort of transform node. It is really, really cool. So I'm gonna chuck my DVE in there. I'm gonna to come to the start of my effect I'm bring it in just before that. I'm gonna keyframe in the Z move. I'll probably, yep, keep it at one. I'm gonna go back to zero. I'm gonna take that away from our screen. You see, it's gonna go. That's pretty boring, pretty bland. So what I will do is make sure that's coming through. Connect the Z to 1.2. Whoops, sorry, 0.8. It's gonna keep on moving forward towards us as it glitches. Easy. And last little thing on my DVE, I'm gonna to go to the spline. I'm gonna get rid of all of this. Just focus on the DVE. Never mind, get rid of rectangle one. Focusing on our DVE tool. And again, I'm gonna smooth it out, but this time I wanna grab that and pull that up. And I'm going to pull this one all the way across because this is going to give the effect that it is speeding towards us and bang. Really love that. Massive fan of that. That looks really, really cool. So now we can just add in some sound effects. You've got the whoosh, bang, glitch effect, and it's still creepy towards you. Really, really, really cool title, guys. Really, really easy. Huge fan of this one. And if we wanted to just have the title, you can come into our background. We can just change that alpha all the way down. And now you can see, bang, just got that. Super easy, guys. Super, super easy. So that is it. That is the tutorial. Let's go back to me and then close this thing out. There it is, guys. A glitch text title effect. Say that three times fast. Built out in Fusion for you. I hope this helps you a bunch, guys. Um, I will have more DaVinci Resolve tutorials coming out. Coming up next, I'm going to be doing a building YouTube intro in Fusion using that glitch effect and using the macros that we uh, learned in the video before. So if you haven't tuned into the macros one, click the link up here, wherever that little box is, click that one up there. It'll show you exactly what you need to know because that is gonna come in really handy when it comes up. And don't forget to save this glitch effect as a macro so you can drag and drop it later on. And it's just gonna be something that you can put into your arsenal, into your DaVinci Resolve folder to make your work just look that much better and that much more polished. Anyway, guys, like I said, it's not actually that complicated of an effect. It does require a little bit of knowledge with Fusion, but I'm assuming if you're brave enough to step in there to try and create it, you probably got a little bit of background anyway. It's lots of simple effects laid on top of each other to create a really cool effect. What I really love about it is that I think about halfway through, once you've done all the rectangles and the polygons, the masking for the text, it doesn't look like much, but then you chuck in that, you know, that displacement and that prism blur, and all of a sudden you've got these amazing effects. That's it from me, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helps a lot. Um, if there's anything else you want to see in Fusion, something that I might be able to help you with, or anything in DaVinci Resolve, let me know. I will do a video on it, and if I don't know how to do it, I'll figure it out and then make a video on it. So I appreciate you guys joining me on another tutorial. I will see you again soon.